if you're placing implants where the bone is, you're doing it wrong. Let me explain. When we place dental implants today, we should be doing it through a prosthodontic-driven protocol. What a prosthodontic-driven pro protocol says is that first we're going to design where we want the teeth to go. And this, this is the same for whether we're doing a onesie, twosies, or whether we're doing full arch. We want to design where the teeth are going to go first so that we can design the implants to go underneath the teeth in the ideal location so that we can optimize both form and function for our patients. So they'll have a beautiful, beautiful set of teeth and they'll have a long lasting set of teeth with minimal to no complications. That's what we want, right? And the way to do that is to start with the end in mind. Stephen Covey said it first, start with the end in mind. We're gonna back into where the implants need to go based on where the teeth go. Now, what we did historically was just the opposite. It was 100% the opposite. It was called the anatomical approach. The anatomical approach is I'm going to lay a flap, I'm going to look at the bone, I'm gonna place the implant in the bone. Then we close it up and it heals great. Why? Because we place the implant in the bone and it's gonna heal great when you place it in the bone, right? And then it's time to put the crown on there. And you go to put the crown on there and you get what we call a Snoopy. If you don't know what a Snoopy is, we'll put a link to the Snoopy video and you can watch that, okay? But a Snoopy is a cantilever. So when you put a cantilever on top of an implant, you increase the risk factors, both biological and mechanical, for the patient dramatically. This is, this is not just a little bit, but this is a lot, like 10 times more kind of thing, like an order of magnitude more complications. So we really want to stay away from placing the implant in a wrong location that results in a prosthodontic solution that's less than optimal. It's not good for the patient and it's not good for your practice because these things are going to start to come back and, and, and bite you because they're going to fail. And then you've got to manage the patient, you've got to manage the case, and it's not good. So the trick is get the implant in the right location. And we do that through a guided system with virtual planning that enables us to get it within a couple hundred microns of the ideal position to get it there start at the starting point. Then the process is easy. Then the process just slides right down over the top with a screw retained solution and bam, you're in. What's the beautiful thing about a screw retained solution? Well, there's no cement. You do all your cementation outside the mouth. So you have absolutely no risk of, of having cement in the sulcus. Okay, you don't have to use a custom abutment most of the time. And the reason is, is that if the implant's in the right location, a hybrid tie base and a monolithic zirconia crown will subside, will, will, suffic will be sufficiently good for the vast proponents of people out there, okay? So you don't need to go to custom, which means you're saving money for the patient and reducing complexities for your cases. And anytime in engineering we can reduce the complexity of a case, we increase the likelihood that the case is gonna last a long time. And isn't that what we want for all of our patients? So in closing, if you hear someone say the old colloquial, that's where the implant, the implant went where the bone was good, that's wrong. So some people will say, well, how do you handle this, doc? What if I want to place the implant underneath the crown like you're saying, but there's no bone? Guys, that's when you graft. That's how you know when you need to graft. It's so simple. If you plan the case and during the planning phase, the implant needs to go where there's no bone, you now know you need a graft. And that's the only time you need a graft. Do, do not start a case, look in the mouth and not take a CBC and not do a virtual plan and tell the patient before you even start, oh, you've lost a lot of bone, we're gonna need a bone graft. That is, a, that is a not a good way to run your practice. And the reason is the vast preponderance of time, there's bone if you place it in the right location. What you're seeing is you're seeing a, a buckle uh, collapse after an extraction. You're seeing that collapse and your initial thought, like everyone, like all of us, is that, whoa, I don't think I got enough bone there. But let me tell you, in 95% of the cases, when I look in the mouth and I go, it doesn't look good in the mouth, I don't say that to the patient. I say, I need more information. And the more information I need is two things. I need a CBC and I need an intraoral scan. I merge them together and I plan a virtual crown. And guess what? The vast preponderance of the time, like 95% of the time, there's enough bone if you just look. And it shocks people. It shocks people. And the people it shocks the most are the people that have been placing implants the longest freehand because they go, oh, that's not true. It is true. It is true. It's what we do every single day. So if you look for the bone underneath the implant or the, you look for the, the bone underneath the crown, you'll find it. 
but you've got to start with the crown first and then back into it. And if you don't have it, that's when you're going to do your bone graft. That's when you're going to do your soft tissue graft if you need it, but not first. Guys, if you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe. If you have any comments, put them below so we can answer them. And if you have any ideas for future videos, we'd love to hear from you.